Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose same remains the same to bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. And yes, there is no other way. No other way. Only one way is not going to be your money. It's not going to be because of who you know in society. It's not going to be due to your educational status. It's going to be to a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And so saying this to come to this here topic, for those of you who are taking things for granted, there is a price to pay for your behavior. Yep, there's a price to pay if you turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 2. And uh, we will look at verse 6. Verse 6. Verse 6, very powerful indeed. It says, Who will render to each one according to his deeds? God will render to each one according to his deeds. And so there is a price to pay according to your deeds. Many people today just want to live their best life now. They want to do what they want to do and uh, disregard God. And so we're in a society now where people are living their best life now because we're not at war. We're not um, perishing. We are not inundated with certain disease processes. We are not feeling certain devastation and so we just want to live what we want to live. But there is going to be a price to pay. There is going to be a price to pay. It is a promise. It says God will render to each one according to his deeds. So continue the frolicking. Continue enjoying yourself. Continue eating sumptuous meals. But there is going to be a price to pay. There is going to come a time when you have a price to pay. And we say a price, it means an unwelcome experience. A price in this situation means an unwelcome experience. Well, let's say, what can be so unwelcome? Well, punishment is not usually something that is nice. You're living and you're enjoying yourself, but you know suddenly there's going to be a price. For example, you like to consume a whole lot of alcohol, a fifth, a fifth per day. When we're talking about a fifth, the first time I heard of a fifth, I was thinking it's just a fifth in terms of a glass, not knowing that there's just this big, uh, big container of vodka, right? People drinking a fifth per day. You drink that all day long and say, oh, we're enjoying ourselves. You can't tell me anything because this is what I do. And then suddenly, suddenly it comes upon them like that, the thief in the night. You know, there's suddenly there's sudden onset of jaundice and belly ache and all of that. Then when you realize they got a cirrhotic liver, there is a price to pay. There is going to be a price to pay. A price to pay for all who disregard God. There is going to be a price. The, 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 the scripture promises you that. It says right here in Romans chapter 2, verse 4, or do you show contempt for the riches of his blessing, forbearance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intent to lead you to repentance? God's kindness is intent to lead you to repentance, not for you to have a best life now. It's to lead you to repentance. But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, the King James Version says, impenitent heart, it means you have no remorse, no regret for your action. Because of that, you're treasuring up for yourself rats in the day of wrath and the revelation of righteousness of God who will render to each one according to his deed. So there is going to be a price to pay. Doesn't matter if you're rich, doesn't matter if you're poor, doesn't matter if you're black, doesn't matter if you're white, does not matter your social economic status in this world, you are going to have a price to pay. Now, today many people are abusing God's kindness. Where is this God? Or we have time. We have enough time to, to just do a little bit more. We can push the limit. We have enough time. 
So we're not worried about God coming right now because we're looking at the signs of the time. You wicked and evil generation, you're looking for signs. Very wicked people indeed. Wickedness has increased because man, looking at the signs, studying the scriptures, said, oh, wait a minute. We have to see that first before that happens. Mm, we still have time to enjoy ourselves. But there's going to be a price to pay for those of you who are abusing God's kindness. You're showing contempt towards God. Turning your backs on God. Kicking up your heels. Saying God will never judge. God is not going to judge. God is so kind. God does not want to put anyone in hell. That's what they're saying now. But there is going to be a price to pay. The same was said. The same was said earlier in this portion of scripture. God will not judge us. And so we're living our best life now. But listen to the scripture. Or do you despise the richness of goodness, forbearance, and long suffering? Do you do so? Do you show contempt for the riches of God's kindness? When it says the riches of God's kindness, meaning God has it in abundance. God is not like man. God is patient. God's kindness is here. So we can come in. We can repent. We can realize that we are in a very grave situation. And so we have to turn around. But because we are showing contempt, many of us will not make it. Many of us will not make it. Too often I've seen and I've heard of people who said, I will be right back. I will be right back. And they never return. Most times you know what's happening here in society. We are in good health. So we are not worried about dying from some disease. I'm not worried about hypertension because my blood pressure is 102 over 68. So I'm not worried about a stroke. I'm not worried about a heart attack. I'm not worried about any liver disease because of um, alcoholic abuse because I don't drink. I'm not worried about lung cancer because I don't smoke. I'm not worried about the environmental disasters because I live in an environmentally safe place. I live in a blue zone. I'm not worried about none of those stuff. I'm not even worried about driving on the street because my car is so safe, it's bulletproof. It has all the latest gadgets in it. It will stop before it go over or, or, or it has rollover stability. It has everything known to man. But here you are, you just walking in your kitchen, you slip, you fall, you hit your head against the countertop. You didn't pay, you, did, you didn't make any allowance for that. And so you die feeling safe but are you safe that is the time you're going to realize that oops there is a price to pay and that price is usually realized by many when it's too late and unfortunately many people who have died cannot come back there's no do-over in the grave there's no do-over once it's gone, it's gone. This is not a Hollywood movie. This is not like you. This is not Groundhog Day. You can repeat the same situation over and over and over and over. Living a very careless life. Thinking that God is asleep. Winking your eyes at someone else. Telling them that this God is, this, this, this God has so much patience, man. We can just continue to do what we're doing. But the scripture is here to remind us in the book of Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3. It says in verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So if you go back and look in Romans chapter 2 and verse 6, it says, God will render to each one according to his deed. God is not slack. That is a promise. That is a promise. That's not conditional on anything. It is a promise. God will render to each one according to his deed. Some people will be faced with the most certain judgment. Some people will be faced with 
with, uh, with obtaining rewards. But everyone according to your deeds, behold, he's going to come quickly to give unto every man a reward according to his deed. What are your deeds today? Are you ready to face God? Are you ready for this judgment? You're saying it is not real. It's not real. I've been hearing about it. I've been hearing about it ever since I was a child. I, I have done so much and I'm still here. So why are you telling me about this God of yours? Where is this God? But there is a reminder, it says, But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. Meaning, timing is of no significance to God. Timing is of significance to man. You're saying, what do you mean, preacher? I'm saying time does not control God, because God himself created time. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him there was nothing made that was made. Meaning God created everything, includes time. So time is for us. It's no time for us to wake up understanding that there is going to be a price to pay. The more you abuse your body, even in society, the natural law, there is going to be a price to pay. You continue to ride your motorcycle, speeding down the highway, tears flying out your eyes, no helmet, no anything. There is going to be a price to pay when you, when you end up in this terrific, horrific accident and you have a brain injury. I've seen many young men in the hospital, many young men. And all they have now is pictures on the wall, pictures in framing, sitting by their bedside. Now they're in a permanent, persistent vegetative state. There is no coming back. There is a price to pay for your carelessness. There is a You see, we like to gamble. We like to gamble. We like to gamble. This is eternity we're talking about. Why are you gambling with your life? Why are you gambling with something that, that is promised to us? It's either you're going to be in eternity with God or in eternity with the devil. I've heard people say that they're going, they're preparing themselves to go to hell. But you see, we can speak about things that we have no experience of. Until you are there, you have no idea what it's going to be like. The closest thing we know of hell is what Jesus has revealed to us. And Jesus spoke about hell more than anyone else in the scriptures. Hell is not as you see in the movies. You have different, different levels of hell. You can buy your way up. You can bribe someone out. You can be in a little part of hell where there's a little AC. There's no AC in hell. There's no Tylenol in hell. There's no ice water in hell. There's no Advil in hell. There's no bear in hell. It's only fire. It's only torment that is in hell. And that is the price you're going to pay if you end up in hell. There will be a price to pay. The price. The price what you call your remuneration. That's what you're going to get if you live carelessly, failing to accept the promises of God, failing to accept that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior overall. There is a price to pay. It doesn't matter what you want to do. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The problem is many of us, many of us, many of us will be forced to our knees at that day and that day. Every eye shall behold him. And on that day, many will want to change. Many will want to run to the churches, but there won't be any church. Many will want to, many will want to tune in to a sermon, but there will be none. Many people want to suddenly change your life, but there won't be any time to change your life because it's too late. It's too late. Once Jesus Christ appears, once the time has come, it is judgment time. God is not going to put a break on it and say, wait a minute. Let them, let them run into the church. But even if that was the case, then the church would be over full. There wouldn't be any space. 
And then perhaps you even have some unscrupulous person standing at the door selling you a spot in the line. Hey, 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 I've been here since 6 a.m. I got a spot. How much you got? How much you got? Because of what we are. We're selfish and lovers of money, lovers of self. Many of us are short-sighted. We only want to live for now. But what about eternity? What about eternity? There is going to be a price to pay. No one want to talk about that these days. We want to go to churches now. And when we go to church, all we want to hear in church is about how good everything is. Well, everything is not good. Everything is not good. People have some money in their pocket and think this is life. This is not life. You have money in your pocket, but yet still, you have to live behind high walls, the most advanced security system in the world. Because someone is going to come to get it. You have money in your pocket, and you can buy the most expensive food in the world. Then you have to worry about what is genetically modified from what is not genetically modified. What is cancerous from what is non-cancerous. What is organic from what is not organic. You have to worry about everything in the world. And then you're going to think that because you have some money in your pocket, this is it. Your money perish with you. God will allow man to do what man wants to do because man has been given free will. You're saying, but it does not make sense. If God knows that that man was going to do this and not repent, why did God allow it? It is simple. It is as if you have an employee or you have a child or you have a spouse. You're not going to force your employee to always be honest within your sight. You're not going to force your child to love you. You're not going to force your spouse to love you. You want them to love you freely. You don't want to force an employee to always be at their best only when you are looking or when you are around or because they know that if they don't complete the task, you're going to punish them. No, you want the employee to always do good because you are treating them properly. And when you treat them properly, it should be reciprocal. They should love you unconditionally. And that is the best result you will get. If you have a child that you do not have to punish every day and say, if you don't do this, you're not getting that. A spouse, you're saying, well, well, if you don't prepare me any dinner, I'm not going to say I love you. And many people want to hear, I love you all day. So you just prepare dinner all day, but deep down, you know that the only thing I want is the dinner. You're not really in love with them. And that's the same thing. God is not going to force anyone to love him. The thing is, God loves us. And that's why God is willing. And God is willing and always has been willing to see that man has an opportunity to come back into fellowship with him. Because after the fall of man, we are living in a state of sin. Man is in a fallen state, whether you want to believe it or not. But there's going to be a price to pay. God does not want us to suffer. Man is the one that wants man to suffer. Because man failed to heed the teaching of God. God is so fair to mankind. God is so fair, even though God gave us free will, God said to mankind from all the way back in the Old Testament, God said, listen, listen up everybody. Deuteronomy 30, look at this, verse 15. God says, see, I've set before you today life and good, death and evil. So God did not hide what he had set before you. And then if you move over and look into verse 19, God, listen to what God said again. God says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I, God, have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And God even go down to tell you what to do. God says, choose, therefore choose life. Choose life that both you and your descendant may live. So it's like God has given you the exam. And God has given you all the answers. You don't have to worry about studying too hard because God has given it to you right there. The answer sheet is right there. All you got to do is fill in the blanks. The answer is A. God says choose A. The answer right here, it says, I've set before you 
today good. I mean, life and good, death and evil. God is telling you, these are the things I've set before you. And then God go over and says, listen, choose life. Choose life. And when you choose life, you will live. That's what God said. God was never dishonest as Satan want God to appear as if he was. What do you mean, preacher? That's what Satan did in Genesis chapter 3. Listen to Satan. Satan said, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 5. For God knows that in the days you eat, your eyes will be open, knowing good and evil. No, that's a lie. God already tell mankind about good and evil. God did not hide anything. God didn't hide anything. In Genesis chapter 2, God says right here in verse 19, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. But here comes Satan. Here comes Satan, stirring up the word, shaking up the word. It's like some fancy preachers want to tell you something else. Make up something in the scriptures that's not there. Well, you know, if you should look at this microphone, you know that this microphone will project my voice. And this microphone, if I don't have this microphone in my hand, close to my mouth, do you understand what I'm saying? And it's a whole a bunch of saying, but it's not nothing. That's what Satan was saying here. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be hoping, knowing good and evil. Didn't God just introduce them and tell them about good and evil? But here is Satan again, telling people, who want to desire what they want to desire. Oh, wait a minute. God, God is hiding it from No, God is not hiding anything from mankind. God is saying, this is good, this is evil. So today, God is saying, choose life because there is a price to pay. But many people disregard God. Many people don't believe God. I don't believe in this God business. I don't know about this God thing. I don't say my, 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 my money and my, I'm a mine, I'm a money, I'm a money, I'm a mine. I don't, I'm, I'm not into that. But wait a minute. But what into that? Currency changes. Currency have the tendency to change. I read about people who stash their bills in the hurt. And when they open their bills, it is full of mold, dry rot. Hiding their money and their money dry rot. All the valuables dry rot is gone. Gone because of inequity. You're storing up for yourself what months can eat. But oh, wait a minute, preacher. Don't you know that they have devised this little, this little, this little moisture proof technology? You can just drop one in it and it suck all the moisture out of your money will be safe. Well, your money is devalued anyhow. There is a price to pay. Many of us are living our best life now, and it's not unique to us because a generation before us wanted to live and was living their best life now, and that was the generation of Noah. The generation of Noah, they were living it up. In Luke 17, verse 26, Jesus says, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. What were they doing in the days of Noah? They were living their best life now. Listen to what they were doing. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. One day, one day, no more preaching, no more preaching, no more preaching. It will be the day for justice. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone on them. People in Sodom were living their best life now, filled with sexual immorality. Man could do whatever man wanted to do. A man could marry who a man wanted to marry to. A man didn't have to marry if a man didn't want to marry. A man could just live and enjoy life because Sodom and Gomorrah, of course, they were wealthy cities. So people are living a sense of false security today. We can do what we want to do because our society tolerates everything. And I have money, so I have the law on my side. But guess what? Just like in the days of Noah, just like in the days of Lot, a certain punishment was rendered unto mankind. The same thing is coming for us. But we can't see it yet. Some of us, some of us, before we incur the wrath of God or the punishment of God, you will incur the wrath of society because many of you, because of disobedience, you're already feeling pain. You're already in some terrible situation because of your disobedience. Some of you are stealing, thieves, 
sticking your hands through people's window and someone cut your hand off. Now you don't have, no, you're only walking around with one hand, one leg, because of disobedience. That is nothing compared to what is going to come upon mankind, the wrath of God. The day of the, the, day of the Lord will come upon mankind. Again, some people think that God is, God is asleep. But there is going to be a price to pay. There is going to be a price to pay. You wicked people with your impenitent heart. No remorse. Continue to do what you want to do. Even lying in the pulpit. Telling lies on God in the pulpit. There is going to be a price to pay for all you wicked preachers that go around telling the, 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 the children of God lies. Telling them that God told you to tell them to give you all their money. Telling them to, 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 that God tell them, or God is telling you that they should mortgage your house and give you the money so you can live and you can enjoy yourself. You can send your kids to the best school while their kids sit at home because they listen to you, foolish people. My people perish because of a lack of knowledge, but people don't want to, re to, to reveal the truth of God. Many charlatans standing in the pulpit pretending like they're preachers. There's going to be a price to pay. There's going to be a price to pay. There's going to be a price to pay starting from the head. Those of you in the church who like position. Those of you who think that this, this, this position comes with, comes with glitz and glamour. Comes with glitz and glamour. So certain men are just in the pulpit for glitz and glamour. Not because they want to do anything for God. Because they feel powerful. When they stand in the pulpit and they say, everyone stand up, everyone stand up, everyone sit down, everyone sit down. Jump on one leg, everyone jump on one leg. And so some preacher relish this thing, they relish the power. They relish the power because they have power. They relish it because they have power. But there is going to be a price to pay. There is going to be a price to pay. As long as God lives and God lives forever, each and every false preachers, there are going to be a price to pay. And you're going to, you, 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 you can't escape from it. Those of you who preach, those of you who teach, will be more strictly or harshly judged. The scripture said it. Teaching God's people that all they need to do is to name it and claim it. Teaching God's people that all they require in this life is to be successful on the job. To get some money because that's all life is about. Life is not all about money. You can have money and you're the most miserable there is. Because your money can't bring you comfort. When you're crying, when you're in tears, your money can't dry your eyes. When you're laying in bed and you can't walk. Your money can't roll up to you and give you a drink of water. He's saying, but preacher, money makes the world go round. What are you saying, preacher? I remember some false prophet when I was telling them about the sowing of seed. It was not about money. Telling me about, so what makes your church operate? Man of God. Think they're going to call me man of God and I'm going to fall and tell them, oh yes, it's true. No, God made the church operate. God is the one that supplies all our needs according to his riches and glory. There's going to be a price to pay if you think this walk with God is all about money. Yes, God wants us to prosper. Yes, God said to seek ye first, to seek him first. Everything, all his righteousness and everything else he will add unto you. But the most important thing that God wants to give us is eternal life. And so there's going to be a price to pay. The wrath of God, the judgment of God, it is a promise. It is a promise as sure as the Lord lives. It is a promise. And each and every one of us, whether we want to believe it or not, we are going to pay. We are going to pay. Some people talk about their atheists. And the one thing an atheist can never ever do is disprove God. They may say, I don't believe. But how can you believe and you can't disprove it? And so the, what the atheists like to do now is turn it back on the Christian to say, you have to prove to me that God exists. I don't have to prove nothing to you. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to debate you. If you fail and if you already make it up in your mind that there is no God, even if you see the evidence before you, because of your wickedness and your impenitent heart and your reprobate mind, you will reject it anyhow. Many people have seen evidence before them. And they reject the evidence. 
It's a simple thing as in society. You hear that drive with seat belt, seat belt save lives. They fuss and they argue. They are, I'm not driving with no seat belt. You want to pressure me. I'm not riding with no helmet on my head. Driving down the street, suddenly someone rearing them. If you had the seatbelt on, yeah, you may have some bruises, you know, little pelvic pain here, little shoulder pain, etc., etc. May suffer a harsh whip, whiplash, but without the seatbelt, you chew the windshield, you're dead. There is going to be a price to pay. There is going to be a price to pay. Yes, when you're wearing the seatbelt. Yes, when you're in the accident. Yes, when you're impacted. You may suffer some pain, some bruises. But guess what? You will be able to live to tell of the goodness of God. Without, you, with, with, without God, without the safety mechanism in place, you will not live. Safety mechanism is there to protect you. Salvation is here to protect you from the, from, the, from, the, from the pangs of hell. So you have to accept this and knowing that there is a price to pay. The wrath of God has been revealed to mankind. So man is without excuse. The scripture said that. So many of us today, many of us today refuse to refuse to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But there is going to be a price to pay. There is going to be a price to pay. Man, woman, everybody, boys and girls of the age who refuse to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as long and as long as the Lord lives, there is going to be a price today to pay. The scripture says right here, but, but knowing this first, 2 Timothy chapter 3, that in the last day, perilous times will come. We're seeing perilous times today, but it's normalized. Why is it perilous time? Because men will be lovers of themselves. And when I say men, women don't feel like, oh, yeah, yeah, you men. We're talking about humanity will be lovers of money, lovers of self, boasters proud, blasphemers, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers. Hmm? Look at that, traitors, headstrong, hearty, all those characteristics, all those traits, we're seeing it today. As a matter of fact, you have churches that promote some of these things. Promote it. You must just be full of self-confidence. You can't be a Christian and you're talking about you're just full of self-confidence. Yes, you're going to be confident, but you're going to be confident because God is the one that is strengthening you. It's not by your strength. It's not by your power. It's not by your might. It's not because of your connection. It's by his spirit. And without the spirit of God, you can't do nothing. You say, but wait a minute, preacher. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You have men who have nothing to do with God and they're surviving. It's a sham. Man without God and they're surviving. It is a sham because there is going to be a price to pay. The price to pay will be heavy. The price to pay will be heavy because the hand of God, the hand of the Lord will come upon man and it will be swift. There will be weeping. There will be mourning. There will be gnashing of teeth. And so God is warning us today. God is warning us today. There is going to be a price to pay. Many men, many men because of self-centeredness, selfishness and their, their, uh, their, their, their ambition to be big. Especially, I don't know why I'm meeting at the men in the pulpit, especially the men in the pulpit, because everybody wants to have a big mega church. Everybody wants to be a somebody. Why do you want to be a preacher? Because I want to travel. Why do you want to preach? Don't you see, oh, I'm traveling. I was there and I am powerful in this place. You should have seen me at work right there. That's all men want to be. Oh, brother so-and-so, I'm coming into... Oh, really? Come over to my church and preach. Don't worry. When you come, we'll give you a love offering. Then they move to the next place. And then they move. So they're just this little conglomerate. They're like a cartel. A cartel is a set of businessmen. But no, it's a negative connotation. You know what I'm saying? But if you go back to the original meaning of cartel, it's a set of businessmen who come together with one aim, one goal. So it's like you're preaching cartels today. You come to my church, I go to your church. You go to his church, I go to your church. And we share the wealth. There's going to be a price to pay, a price to pay, a price to pay, a price to pay, a price to pay. And men will do any and everything to achieve their goal. Man will do any and everything. It's, it's not even unique to just today. It's all the way back. 
All the way back, man engaging in sorcery, man engaging in divination, man engaging in all those things from all the way back. You had kings who used to put their children through the fire. People who used to sacrifice their children, shedding of innocent blood. It's still happening today. Still happening today. Wickedness of man have increased. But the judgment will be swift. Stop the lying. Stop the sorcery. Stop the fornication. Stop the adultery. Stop the homosexuality. Stop the revelry. Stop all these things. Stop all the fun stuff. <laughs> stop all the fun stuff. Because that's what we call fun now. Man getting tired of their wives. Woman getting tired of your husband. So now they say, wait a minute. We don't want what look like us now. We want what don't look like us. And the scripture said this right here. God has also give them up to the uncleanness in the loss of their heart to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Who exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creator the rather than the creator. That's what men are doing today. I can just live with my woman or my two women or my three women. I don't have to worry about everything. But you what? You got three women? Yeah, I got three women, dog. I'm looking for another one too. There's going to be a price to pay. There's going to be a price to pay. Because everything is so normalized now. Everything is so normalized now. Sometimes you're walking down the street and you who are right, they make you look like you're the hater, you're the one that's wrong. Do you notice things of God now is so hated? It is so hated. Man, man, man hate truth these days. And this is a preacher, what do you mean truth? Hey, tell me what is truth. And I just said truth is exclusive to God. Because truth must be exclusive to God. Because if everything was truth, it could not be of God. So the truth is, the truth is, I'm standing here and I'm speaking before you right here. But someone else's truth can be that, oh, I hear him and he's outside, so he must be preaching outside. Someone around you says, oh, I hear him and he must be in that room, so he must be in that room. But the truth is, I'm right here. It's exclusive to God. That's what truth is. God will repay each and every one of us. Each and every one of us understand that there is going to be a price to pay. Book of Malachi chapter 3. Listen to verse 5. And I will come near you for judgment. God speaking, and I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans, against those who turn away an alien because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. We're seeing all these things today. Man don't fear God now. Man don't fear God. Man, man just so, just so brazen. It's a good thing God is not like he was back then, meaning he has never, he's, he's not changed. But in the, in the sense that he has sent Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to die for our sins. So now God has said, you have a way out. But back then, when it was the giving of sacrifices and offering, you don't do that. You don't do that. You don't do that. But now people can... People can misuse and abuse and do what God's kindness. Think they're spiting God, laughing at God. People today hate the things of God. But there will be a price to pay. There will be a price to pay. People like to, people like to laugh and make fun of the things of God today. People make comedy shows about God. Comedy shows about Jesus. Talking all sorts of crazy things about Jesus. Just, just to show you how, how great God is. That's just to show you how, how it's a beautiful thing Christianity is. Because if you were to make fun of some other prophets and some other religion, they'll come and they'll kill you. And so they stay away from that. But when it comes on to the things of God, because God is so kind. That's the reason God, al God alone is good. Because God is good. God said, you know what? They are just being foolish. And so they are not killed. And Jesus is saying to us, love your neighbor. Love your enemy. 
And so when people do wicked things to us and they say, ah, ha, 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 you're just passive. No, we're not passive. We're Christ-like. We're Christ-like. People hate God so much, but there is going to be a price to pay. You want to live your best life now. You want what you want. You want to do what you want to do without anyone talking to you. But there is going to be a price to pay. Now, Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14 to 17. I wish you could see the pages of this Bible. My little one was studying here. Her scribbling is all over the page. <laughs> But listen to this. There's a price to pay. It says the great day of the Lord is near. It is near and as sudden and as quickly. The noise and the day of the Lord is bitter. There the mighty man shall cry out. The day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble, a day of distress, a day of devastation. And desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpets, a day of alarm against the fortified city, against the high towers. And listen to God. This is what God is saying. I will bring distress upon man, all people, and they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall pour out like the dust and their flesh like refuse, meaning garbage. You see, you don't even hear about... Many people are going to church today and they don't even know that there's a book in the Bible called Zephaniah. They don't know that there's a book that's called Zephaniah. As a matter of fact, people, you know, a lot of people in churches now don't even know what a Bible is. Don't even know anything about no books or no Bible. And so I'm saying to you, there is going to be a price to pay. All you people who are backsliding, actively backsliding, there's going to be a time... There's going to be a time, there's going to be a time when your own backsliding will testify against you. There's going to be a time when you got to pay for your backsliding, spitting, and spitting up in the sky. So you're spitting at God. That spit is going to fall back right in your face. And you are going to be the one that will be shamed. God has rescued you, taking you out of a degrading society. A degrading lifestyle where you're just being treated like garbage. But now, but now you're back in the world. Because you refuse. You refuse to accept the goodness of God. There's going to be a price to pay you wicked backsliders. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 19. Your own wickedness will correct you. And your backsliding will rebuke you. Know therefore and see that it's an evil and bitter thing. That you're forsaken the Lord your God. And the fear of me is not in you says the Lord of hosts. There is going to be a price to pay. I cannot emphasize it. There's going to be a price to pay. The price to pay will be high. You can avoid this payment. You can avoid this unpleasantness, this unpleasantry, with repentance. It means change from your evil ways. Return from your backsliding. Come back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. God is not waiting, hiding in a corner, waiting to punish people. Waiting, aha, I got you. God is not like some crooked police officers that's hiding behind a fence. And as soon as you pass by, they rush out and get you. I got you. Ha <laughs> ha. But if you were obeying the Lord, I, I, I guess they're not crooked. Because if you're obeying it, then they wouldn't have got you. But some of them are crooked indeed. They'll set you up. They'll even come up against you at the stoplight and rev their engine. Rawr, rawr, undercover cops. And they'll speed out and you, you take the bait. That's what society is doing. Baiting a lot of us. Speeding after what we believe is, but it's a decoy because it's going to get they're going to get you. And so, those of you who are relying on the devil to give you good and great gifts, there's going to be a day, there's going to be a day when you're going to realize that all the things that the devil promised and gave to me, it was just, it was just a delusion. Because there is going to be a price to pay. There is going to be weeping. There is going to be mourning. There is going to be gnashing of teeth. You are saying this preacher is fear mongering. I am not fear mongering. I am just preaching from the scriptures. Scripture says the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. 
But then it goes on to say, but he is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. There is no repentance in the grave. It is appointed unto man to die once, and after death comes the judgment. There is going to be a price to pay, and the price is high. So I say to you, my brothers and sisters, why do you want to pay the price? Jesus Christ already paid the price for you and for me. All we have to do now is just accept. It's free for us, but it costs Jesus' life. Doesn't matter who you are, big, small, brilliant, not so brilliant, skinny, in good shape, in good health, weak, doesn't matter, black, white, gay, straight, it doesn't matter who you are. There's going to be a price to pay. The only way out of this is fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. And so if today is that day, then you decide that you want to make it right. Today is the day. Today is the day. Tomorrow is not guaranteed to any man. In Jesus' name, amen.